This is not the primetime lineup. This is a news show where the anchor from NBC News was interviewing the spokesperson from GoProud about Michelle Bachman. The fact that Michelle Bachman and her husband right now are in any kind of controversial figures over the over this supposed, you know, anti-gay therapy that uh, Marcus Bachman offers as as one of multiple things that happen at their clinic. Let me let me just talk about this for a minute because I understand that it's a touchy subject and I, and it's funny because I say to people, "Dake, do you want to not be up there?" I I totally understand. I'm sorry. <laughs> um I I pride myself on the fact that I'm big with the gays. <laughs> that I have a significant and loyal gay audience. I have I have a couple of people in my audience who were transgendered. Uh, and God knows what the hell the rest of you people do with your penises. So I've got a lot of uh, free thinkers in my audience, shall we say. And I have been uh, friends with, family members with, or uh, or close business partners with gay people for it was since I was 14. Since I was 14 years old. Now, I know, you know, the, the intolerant left will say, oh, he's just saying some of my best friends are gay. Whatever. That's fine. You know, I really don't need... I, I'll be honest with you. I, I get more upset when I'm called racist than homophobic because to call me homophobic is... It's beyond laughable. It, 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 but it is. It's just so laughable, I can only laugh at it. So that's fine. So... I don't need to prove to anybody how I feel about gay people. But let me just say something. There, are, Everybody is different. Everyone. I know that this is a hugely philosophical point I'm making right now. And I know that I'm breaking new ground. But, but, but I'm going to say it anyway. We are all individuals. And each one of us has different psychological makeups. Each one of us approaches things in a different way. Each one of us has different desires, different needs, different goals and expectations for their lives. Now, I have a couple of friends that I have known over my lifetime. And there was a time in their lives where I think they would be considered to be gay. They would have been called gay by any standard description. Now, and, and this is this all actually, by the way, brings up a whole other question. What makes somebody gay? In other words, can you be a gay virgin? Can you be gay but still be a virgin? Can you be gay and not actually have sex with a man if you're a man? I'm just talking about gay men right now. Let's, lesbianism is a whole other subject and a good one. But tonight, let's just talk about gay men, shall we? Hey, let's talk about gay men, shall we? Should I turn the lights down? Talk to me. Tell me, what makes a gay man a gay man? Their desire? What they desire or what they do? Is it a behavior that makes someone gay? Or what's inside their mind or their heart or their, or their hormones that makes them gay? This is a critically important question to ask because they are asking for legal protection. They want to be defined as a legally protected group. Now, if you're going to define a legally protected group, you must define what that group is and what makes somebody a member of that group. So I ask you again, can you be gay and never have sex with someone of the same sex? Can it just be defined by a desire in your mind? And if that's the case, and frankly, I think that it has to be. Because otherwise, I mean, how can you have a hate crime against a gay teenager if, you know, a lot of teenagers are still virgins, right? How does, how does a, a, a gay teen express themselves and know that they're gay? Well, I'm thinking they know they're gay based on what's inside them, what they want, what they desire, what their feelings are, right? So you're telling me now that we are defining a whole new class, a legal class in our society worthy of constitutional protection based on something they desire? D 
do you realize what we're doing when we do that? Do you realize the doors that you are opening? How can you possibly have a class of people that are protected constitutionally because of what they want, what they think, what they desire? Do, do you understand this? Am I, am I explaining this properly, Dake? Do, does, is it? Okay. It, it is impossible. But set it aside for a minute. If, if that is how we define it, if we define it based on, you know, the traditional or stereotypical characteristics that one would ascribe to a gay man in our society, setting aside the actual sexual act, but mannerisms, behaviors, and desires, I would say that I had two very good friends who were, for all intents and purposes, gay. I never inquired about, I have no first-hand or even second-hand knowledge about what their sexual activities were, but I knew they weren't dating girls. Now, one of those men right now is a member of the clergy and gave his life to God. And another one of those men got married to someone in his church. They're both youth pastors, and they have three children. Now, I know that the... Uh, Dan Savages of the world will say that both of these men are ticking time bombs of repression who are just a stone's throw away of going postal. But you know, the left is all supposed to be about people doing what they want, right? I'm okay, you're okay. Don't tell me what to do. I'm not going to tell you what to do. Well, you know what? If a man has feelings, but he decides that he doesn't want to live the life that goes along with those feelings. So he goes to a psychologist and says, I want you to help me because this is the life I want for myself. And, and I'm not able to get that life right now because of these other thoughts and feelings that I'm having. Can you please help? What did the compassionate left want done with those people? What do the bleeding heart, compassionate liberals who find themselves in the gay left activist world want done with those poor people who don't want to be, who don't want to live that life? If you ask the compassionate, liberal, caring, gay activists left, they say they can go fuck themselves, those people. They must be gay. They have no choice. They have no choice. Do you understand me? And if the psychologist dares to try to help them, that psychologist is a quack who should have his license removed and publicly ridiculed and shamed for the practice that he has. Do you understand the fascist, authoritarian, totalitarian, horrible, horrible thing these people are doing? Not only to the doctors who are interested in helping these poor souls, but to the poor souls themselves. How dare they? How dare they decide to take this choice away from people? I have seen a lot of gay adults who have very unfulfilling lives, who wish they could be married, who wish they could have a family, who wish they could have made a different choice, and they are very sad right now in their lives. And again, to the compassionate, liberal, gay activist left, they say, we don't care. This is who you are. You were born this way. Your decision was made for you from the moment you were created in your mother's womb. You have no choice. We will tell you the life that you must live. And I see my two other friends. One of them a member of the clergy who radiates happiness, radiates joy of life, reflects the image of God, in my opinion in the way he treats his fellow human beings. 
He has chosen a celibate life. I look at my other friend who, who has three glorious children, and he loves being a father more than anything. He loves being a father more than I do. And these two men are failures in the eyes of the radical leftist gay movement. Now you tell me what's wrong here. What in God's name is going on here that we cannot speak up and speak back at these people and say, you are wrong. You are the ones who are not compassionate. You are the ones who are totalitarian. You are the ones who are fascist. And you are the ones who are actually trying to take choice away from people. Because of your sad, miserable, pathetic lives, you now say that anyone else who happens to be similar to you must have the same sad, angry, pathetic lives. Well, I say no. I say we should really, truly be open-minded. And we should embrace people's desires, even if those desires do not fall in line with what these jackasses choose they must do. Now, this brings us back to this discussion earlier today on MSNBC, where this so-called controversy over a clinic who deigns to actually want to help people not follow that path and not walk down that road. They dare to actually help them instead of turning their backs on them, closing the door and saying, get out, there's something wrong with you for wanting to change. That is controversial in 2011. So a member of GoProud was out there because GoProud has asked for a meeting with Michelle Bachman to discuss these matters. And the member of GoProud was talking about how important it is that we get a Republican in as president and watch the combative nature from the news anchor, an NBC news anchor, debating with this man. You know, we're reaching out to all of the, the presidential candidates because, frankly, uh, gay Americans are living in the Obama economy too, and it's important that we uh, beat him next November and replace this failed president. But you so were replacing we're him with a person that would extinguish you. You're pl replacing with a person that doesn't believe that you have a right in this country to get married, that believes you don't even have a right in this country to be gay because she co-owns a clinic that will convert you. He will be celebrated as tolerant. He will be celebrated as open-minded. Give me a call, 347-850-1946. Tell me I'm wrong. Where am I wrong on this? Where am I wrong? You want legal protection for gay people in America? It means you're legally protecting a class based on two things. Number one, what they happen to want in their mind. Or number two, where they happen to put their penis. You okay with that? I'm not. Give me a call.